Welcome to Scotland. Um, there was a hint of Scottishness. At Scotland, Scotland. Probably offending lots of. Welcome to Scotland. Don't believe me? Then check out that genuine Scottish tree outside my genuine Scottish hotel room. I drove up here yesterday. It took me eight hours to get here because in an hour's time, I'm running in a Scottish round of the Spartan Obstacle Course Race Series. The hope is that by this evening, I would have finished it, picked up my medal, and done well enough to qualify for the World Championships in next month. That is the plan. These things don't always go to plan. It's quite possible that by this evening, I'll be wondering if a 16-hour round trip to go for a jog in the woods was a good idea. A jog in the woods is slightly unfair because there's also monkey bars and ropes. I'm not gonna justify 16 hours of driving. So the plan is to leave not long now and get down to the start of the course. It's only five minutes from my hotel here in Perth, which is perfect. I'm running in the beast distance today. Spartan do three distances, sprint, short, super, medium, beast, long. They do a few others, but they're the main ones. I've done a sprint, I've done a super twice. I've yet to do a beast. The super took me two hours. I have no idea how long the beast is gonna take. Don't even wanna think about it. The hope is, to beat half of the people in my competitive age group. If I do that, then I'm very likely to qualify for the World Championships. Will I do that? Will I do that? Probably not. Um, statistically, it's very unlikely. I've yet to finish in the top half of my age group on any of my races for two main reasons. Firstly, I'm new to this. I've only been doing these this year and I'm not very good yet. Secondly, and slightly more permanent as an issue is that I am this size. I am big and heavy and these races are typically dominated by people that are small, lightweight and very good distance runners. It's why Mo Farah is tiny and runs marathons and doesn't play basketball. Spoiler alert because today is today, that was yesterday, so you now know that at the very least I survived. But what followed in that hotel room was a very long explanation for me about why Michael Jordan is better off playing basketball and why The Rock would be a terrible ultra runner. Suffice to say, being big or bigger than normal is not particularly an advantage in obstacle course racing. That said, let's get into the footage. That is Spartan Phil, getting everyone excited. The people you can see there are the age group runners that I'm with, that's 45 to 50. In fact, they actually put everybody in that same group that's over 45, so it includes the older guys as well. Maybe health and safety keep all the old people together. We're off. My plan at this point is just to keep with the group. We start off with some pretty easy ones. This was quite a good course actually. We went out onto the streets of Perth, the guy in blue beside me, we'll come back to him later. They took us out across the river uh, and up into the hills. And by the time we got up into the hills, we had done... ...a lot of climbing. So at this point, things are slowing down dramatically. A lot of people walking, as you can see. Barbed wire crawl, pretty straightforward. And then the spear throw. Now, I have done three Spartans and failed three spear throws. It's got so annoying that I built my own spear from a broom handle and I practiced and practiced. And here is where I got very, very lucky. The spear hit the ground as it went into the hay bale, but bounced back and ended up coming to rest about an inch off the deck. I checked with the marshal, apparently that was perfectly fine, and off I went. And I even looked in the Spartan rule book when I got home, because I knew my kids would call me out on it, and it's perfectly legit. The spear can hit the ground on its way to the target, and as long as it comes to rest off the ground, you're good to go. So, spear throw, nailed it.
I've got to say the views at this place were amazing. We did an awful lot of climbing, but the reward for getting so high up was that you got a heck of a view on the way back down. Absolutely beautiful up there. So let's rattle through a few obstacles. These are pretty straightforward. Climbing over the inverted bars, no particular drama. In fact, one of the few where being a bit taller helps. Hold on. Olympus wall is always a tricky one. Um, I've never failed it, but I always come very close to slipping. It's a very easy one to make a mistake on. No problems this time though. Got the bell. Seven foot walls. Normally pretty straightforward, but at this point cramp was starting to set in and it was a bit of a struggle getting over that. I've got to say the woods up there for running through were absolutely superb. Really enjoyable part of the race. The ground was soft, but not wet and muddy. Could really push hard through the woods. I just imagined I was being chased by a bear and off I went. Really good fun part of the race. Some of these downhill sections were tricky. Had to watch literally every foot position to make sure you didn't go and step on a log and trip over. The climbs were steep, literally, as you can see, crawling my way up. And then Twister. Now, Twister is tough. In fact, as I approach the Twister obstacle, you can see the people on the left-hand side already doing their burpees because it's hard to get across. In fact, there are three guys on there at the moment. Only one of those makes it across. I don't know, but I'm guessing that's probably about normal odds for this thing. One in three, if that. Now. I go backwards on the twister because that's what the YouTube Spartan video suggested and have always got two thirds of the way across before missing a hand grip, ending up swinging on one arm and falling off. So annoying is that, that I've got a ring in my garage that I hang on one arm from just to get good at hanging from one arm. And as you see, data that sounds, it came in very useful. At this point, I've missed. I'm now swinging, screaming like a baby. And would normally have fallen off, but practice makes perfect. And I get myself back up and I can continue on. A lot of screaming. One of the hardest parts here is that when you're hanging at a complete stretch, you don't have any capacity to move your hand across to the next rung you don't it's too far away you have to pull yourself in a bit of a chin up so that you've got some some spare space to move your hand across i'm explaining it very badly but basically you need to pull yourself up and when you're exhausted that pull up is tough going i just want to ring it yeah i've got a bit of a swing on and hit it Twister, Where? completed. Oh my God. Absolutely delighted, as you can see. Come on. Come on. Very excited. Sandbag carry, easy one. Climbing over this thing, pretty straightforward. Again, one of the obstacles that's slightly easier for taller people because you can grab the first rung. Quite straightforward for me, no problems there. Another obstacle that came next, but for some reason the GoPro didn't film, so I'll describe it, was a giant atlas ball, big stone ball, with a handle on top of it. As I approached the obstacle, there were people holding the weight with two hands between their legs and sort of waddling across the little course you had to complete with it. I ran up to that, picked it up one hand, and ran with it like it was a man bag. It was very, very straightforward. And then what follows is pretty much the story of my Spartan races. Having completely demolished what for some people is quite a tricky obstacle yeah, yeah, yeah. and left people struggling on it or even doing burpees, they then catch me 10, 15 minutes later on the running sections and blow by like I'm standing still because I'm often standing still. And there they go. I need to get out and run more. We're now back into the town and the way it was set up was that there was an awful lot of obstacles still to go. So having got back into the town, there were a lot of obstacles all in, all in one space. 
which was good because it let me see who was behind me, who was in front of me that I could chase down. Um, and the obstacles are the part that I really enjoy. So this was a good section for me. Ring swings after twister, the, this is a swing in the park. I could do this all day long. And then the rope climb. The rope climb, rope climb is an interesting one because in my opinion, if you can do a couple of chin ups, you can easily do a rope climb. It is 90% technique. And yet I see people struggling on it all the time. People that are way fitter than me, stronger than me, better on the monkey bars and the other hanging obstacles than me, but they just don't have very good technique. So for me, it's a great opportunity to go past people that are better than me in pretty much every way, but haven't practiced climbing on a rope. I've got one in the garage for practicing. Second spear throw. If you're now thinking two spear throws, really? Join the club. Um, not pleased at seeing this. Having said that, I absolutely nailed this one. Uh, the practice in the garden with the broom handle, ridiculous though it looks, paid off. Let's just pause this here. This spear is going absolutely bang on the middle of that target. This was a beautiful spear throw. However, the second it hits the target, I was allowed a fraction of a second of joy, and you hear that in my voice, before cramp hit me like, like a shark attack. I thought I'd lost my lower leg. Yeah. It was horrific. Oh. Um, playing it back, it's quite amusing. The Z wall, another obstacle, a bit like the Olympus wall that I've always completed and should never fail, but you're always on the edge with this one, and an easy slip and, and you're touching the ground and you're done. And at this point, my legs are toast. Both hamstrings, both quads are just going in and out of spasm. I've pretty much got no control over them at all at this stage. That's a disadvantage if you're new to obstacle course racing when your legs don't work. It doesn't help. But eventually made it, got the bell, on we go. Atlas stones. Big, heavy things to run around with. Love this. Wish the stones were heavier. Wish the course that you have to run with them on was longer. Little round of applause, because I'm flying. And then this. Coming out of the barbed wire, there's our chap in the blue from earlier, remember him? He's slightly ahead of me, and I had aspirations of passing him at this point, but as I stood up, I realized my legs didn't work. When I finally got them working, I missed the first run at the wall, had to go back and take a second go at it. By now, chap in the blue is long gone. Get over it this time. Very frustrating, in a lot of pain at this stage. Uh, how much pain? Well, this is how I get over a four foot wall. I just fall over the four foot wall. This is an interesting one. I've not done this one before. I'd seen it on the internet and I'd seen the technique being used by the chap in the blue there who somehow I'd managed to catch up. Going across there like some sort of little ninja. No idea how he's staying upright on that thing. So I went for the more traditional approach of just hand over hand with my feet hooked over it which in theory, in my head, sounded like a good idea, but as soon as my legs hooked onto the rope, they started cramping, which meant I couldn't move them. I had to just leave them where they were and drag them, so that caused some pretty nasty rope burns that still hurt now. And yeah, just lots and lots of cramp, and accordingly lots and lots of uh, rather embarrassing Shit. level screaming going on. I genuinely thought I was going to fail this obstacle, even more so than Twister. My hands were gone, I, was, I just couldn't grip anymore, the rope was too small, my legs were in spasm, I felt sick, I'm upside down, the bell looked like it was a million miles away. Horrible, horrible experience. And it doesn't really end with the bell. When I hit the bell, I then fall to the floor and realize that I can't move. So I end up lying on the floor for 
probably a good three or four minutes before I managed to crawl my way to one of the uprights of the frame and basically clamber upwards. And the only thing more exhausted at this point than me was my GoPro battery because it gave up. Having said that, there wasn't much more to it. The only thing after this was monkey bars, which I completed pretty straightforwardly. And then over the fire jump and across the line, got my medal. Pretty happy. Pretty good we'll have to do. Got my medal, got a clean round, no burpees. First beast to not have any obstacle fails was not expected, so that was a bit of a result. So just about justifies, just about justifies the 16 hour round trip. Although when I was coming back down the M6 toll road with both legs in spasm at 80 miles an hour and nowhere to stop, that was a bit worrying. That aside, can't complain. Did I qualify for the World Championships next month? No. No, I didn't. I'll tell you why. Because of this guy. That's right, Mr. In Blue. <sighs> okay, here's how it had to work. Because of the qualification criteria, which is a bit convoluted, I had to finish in sixth place in my age group. I finished in seventh. Who finished in sixth? Who do you think? So, well done, Mr. Blue. He was sixth, I was seventh. Uh, I didn't qualify. Uh, annoying. Uh, how annoying? Really, really annoying. But there you go. Would I rather, I'd rather have, I was going to say I'd rather have done burpees because I failed obstacles and qualified. Would I? Would I? Do you know what? I think I'm happier with a clean round than I am qualifying. I'm not sure. I need to think on that one. I have another Beast Spartan event in Windsor in a few weeks time. That actually takes place one week before the World Championships. So theoretically, I could still qualify. Another day, another dilemma to overcome. Any tips for anyone that's not run a beast before? Run, 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 run. People will tell you to practice your burpees and to practice your chin-ups and yes, do that, but run. It is a long, hard running race. I've done half marathons, I've done some 50k marathons, and that 22k through the woods with obstacles was far harder on me than any of those running races. So just run. And if you have the time, the facilities, the space, and the inclination, you can hang beams and ropes and rings from your garage and practice swinging on them. Hope you found it useful, hope you found it interesting. If you've got any questions, any feedback, like, subscribe, ask away, all that normal stuff. See you next time. Just in case you were wondering, I do.